Hey folks, it's Rob with Two Guys in a Ride, and we're out here at the Discover Victoria Classic Car Show and Event, and I am with another Rob. Yeah, you know what? Two Robs. Poor Nathan. Oh, stop. <laughs> so, Rob, I, we, he, he's got a cool story. He's got a couple of cool cars, and we're going to have him tell you uh, about him about his love for these cars and what drew him to these cars and give us a little history of himself as well. Rob? Thanks, Rob. Hey, uh, everybody. Rob Thurston here uh, from Olivia, Minnesota. Uh, thanks, you guys, for uh, coming here tonight. Um, welcome to Victoria. First yes. car show here. Beautiful. First car show yep. here. Uh, yep. Thanks for coming. Uh, yep. I've been coming here for a couple years. Um, great, great event. Um, thanks for coming to check out these uh, legend car race cars. Um, as Rob said, I've been racing these cars since 1998. Um, this is my original car you see behind me here. Now let's, let, real quick, let's give them some scale because, I mean, if we kind of go down on one knee, how's that Nathan for a shot? But you can get some scale as to how small this vehicle is and tell us what a legend race car is. And, I mean, go ahead and finish your story, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, so legend cars are uh, 5 8 scale cars uh, of uh, kind of classic uh, 30s, uh, 30s model cars. So what we're looking at here is a 34 Ford sedan. Uh, next to us here is a 34 Ford coupe. Um, all of them are spec class cars, so race cars built with everybody running the same equipment. Okay. So what we got, everyone running the same engines, tires, uh, shocks, rims, I mean, rear ends, everybody's running the same equipment. So what we're, what we're looking at here. You don't have, it's not, there's, there's not a Chevy 350 or a Ford uh, 302 in there. What have you got for an engine in these cars? That's correct. So right now, what we're looking at here is a Yamaha 1250cc uh, motorcycle engine. So what we're looking at is an air-cooled carbureted engine. Now, we've been running these engines for about 25 years. In the car next to us here, uh, they just came out with a brand new engine for us. It's a Yamaha FZ09 900cc three-cylinder EFI liquid-cooled engine. So reliability, uh, much better for us, cooling much better for us. Uh, it's going to be a big deal for the class. Okay, what got you started racing and what got you started in this series of racing? What is it? What, what, what bug bit you that made you probably tuck tail and tell your mom, hey, I want to go racing? What was it? You know, it's kind of a funny story. Growing up in Olivia, Minnesota, um, it, it's the corn capital of the world, so you, you wouldn't think much about racing there. But uh, our next door neighbors, um, he, he, uh, he used to race at Bird Island Speedway on the dirt track. And he used to sneak me into the pits. He used to actually put me in the back seat of his truck hauling his race car over there and throw a blanket over me when I was about six, seven years old and say, don't make a noise when we go into the pits. And uh, I got hooked from that point because he used to put me on top of his truck in the pit area and say, don't move, I'm gonna go out racing. And, and that guy ended up, uh, Nick Kranz ended up uh, going up into IndyCar and becoming general manager of Dick Simon Racing. Um, tragically, his life ended too soon of a heart attack. Um, so, so we race in honor of him. Um, but that kind of got me hooked on racing. Um, the Legends cars, what we see here, are all manufactured in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, as I said earlier, they're spec class. So you, you actually order these ready to race, or you can build them yourself as kind of a kit car. Um, but how I got started with these cars are um, the, the dealership was actually in Olivia. So you think a town of 2,000 people, how does Olivia end up with the dealership? Well, I ended up there and a classmate of mine, uh, Scott Brandt and the Brandt family, uh, had the dealership. And so um, being good friends with Scott, I kind of got hooked on racing. I had a passion for racing growing up. Uh, the, the next biggest thing was talking to my parents into uh, uh, getting me into one of these cars, which was the tough sell. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't say I begged, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I kind of begged, you know, as a, as a 14, 15 year old, uh, telling my parents it was a good idea to go buy a $13,000 race car. That's, wow. a, 
that's okay. a tough sell as a kid, you know. Um, but I put enough effort in around the house and, and, and uh, told them I really, really, really want to do this. Um, they put enough faith in me uh, to go ahead and purchase a car. Now, the funny thing is I had never driven a race car before. <laughs> this is the cool part, yes. Uh, the other thing was I had never seen the race track before, uh, nor had I ever seen these race cars on the racetrack before. Okay, so let me, let me recap. You talked your folks into getting a, uh, this race car. $13,000, but they did it. You had yet to ever step foot on the track, much less in the car. <laughs> okay, so tell me about the first uh, practice or race. When was the first time you actually drove one of these cars? Yeah, it was, it was about a week before the season opener. Um, it, it, I mean, it, I, I killed the car about eight times because of the clutch, okay. you know. Um, you know, I didn't crash anything, but uh, so so the you know parents were happy about that. You know, the the first season, you know, was interesting. We we raced 35 races that first season um, between Sock Center, Fergus Falls, uh, Shakopee, Elko, and a few out in Wisconsin. Uh, the the funny part was is we got lapped um, at least 34 of those 35 races. <laughs> I mean, it was miserable. <laughs> uh, it, it, it wasn't successful. But it was your first season, first time in the car, first time doing all of this. So that's not bad at all. I, I agree. You know, but, but what happened on that 35th race was we were running right in the middle of the pack, and we got spun out and crashed the car. Oh, oh, oh. You know, oh. So, so at that point, it all of a sudden became expensive. You know, the, so the 35th race, we crashed the car, uh, bent up the rear end pretty bad. Um, but you know what, it's fixable. Uh, so we went ahead, you know, got ready for the second year, picked up some speed, you know, raced another 36 races. But you know what happened the second year is we picked up enough speed to be running right in the middle of the pack. Okay. And you know what happens in the middle of the pack? You crash a lot. And that year we crashed about 16 times. And you know, that, that gets really expensive. So, uh, yeah, it's expensive hobby. Um, is it a hobby? Is it a career? And how do you fund all of these uh, spins and wrecks and crashes and all that? Well, you know, at that point I was still under 18, so I guess I was still living at home. <laughs> And, uh, That's a heck of an allowance. and hoping the parents were still paying the bills, uh, which very generously they will. Uh, they, they, they were. Um, uh, so, so God bless my parents for that because uh, they kept me going. Um, and then the, the 2000 season, um, we really turned a corner and started racing up front. Um, uh, we made some strides. We actually won the championship uh, in Sock Center that year. We run a handful of races. Was, how, what season was that then in 2000? How many seasons had you been racing? Uh, so that would have been my third season. Okay. Yep. Okay. And, the, and the really neat thing about that was uh, I mentioned uh, Scott Brandt earlier, my yep. classmate. Yep. He had won the championship in Sox Center in uh, 97, 98, 99. Uh, so the championship had been in Olivia for three straight years, and then I won it in 2000. Um, and then in 2001, uh, went on to have uh, a, an, an amazing season beyond my belief. We won 19 of 36 races, uh, won 13 of 19 in Sox Center, won another championship there, uh, went on to finish third in the nation in points. Really? Yep, got invited out to Las Vegas uh, to race in the national championship. In fact, uh, beat Kyle Busch in the national championship out there, yeah. 
Yep, and Kyle Busch used to race in legend cars before he made it to NASCAR. Well, that's that's what I was going to talk to you about. Is this a stepping stone to the next level? Because I know you hear about, uh, what was it, Jimmy Johnson, I think, was four years old in the go-kart. Uh, Smoke, uh, Smoke uh, uh, Stewart raced when he was a little kid. Uh, Jeff Johnson, all these guys a little kid. Um, the whole Lee Petty, Richard Petty, Kyle Petty. You hear about these guys. So is this, uh, is this a lifelong dream or is this a hobby? that you're enjoying where you're at and having a blast or what do you or what do you want to do with it yeah so I took the next step in 2002 and started racing super late models and it, you know it was a lot of fun to go to super late models um, the the thing to get to the next step is to have um, the the big money backing you know, and, and you really got to go out and find that, and you got to start racing touring series, regional series. You, you really got to start traveling. And, you know, we didn't really have the time commitment to put towards that. And, and really racing these is more fun. I had a lot of fun racing these. We did that for about three years and had, had success doing it, but I, I just wasn't really ready to make that next step. Are you your own pit crew? Yeah, I, you know... Um, it, I, I've got a small pit crew, including my mom, um, my wife Abby. Uh, I got Wait a minute. I've got a picture of your mom in a fire suit holding that big can of gasoline, like on the back of a NASCAR. Is that what she does? Or? So, so <laughs> thankfully, in super late models, we don't have to do uh, fast pit stops. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so no, she didn't need to wear a, f a fire suit, but I have no doubt she would throw it on uh, in the event that she would need to. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so we we ended up winning uh, uh, four championships in Sox Center, uh, multiple state championships, uh, had plenty of success, um, you know, and and then just just kind of took a step back, started a family, um, got a young family now. Um, my wife Abu, we've got an eight and a five year old, two girls um, that love traveling along with us when we go racing. Yeah, so so I've got a young family. Uh, we race six to eight times a year down at Elko Speedway now. Okay. Um, two years ago, we had a pretty big scare for my family. Um, this car we're sitting on right here, uh, we ended up flipping over at Elko Speedway, coming off the turn, okay. um, flipped it over on its roof and spun around on its roof all the way down the back stretch and then upside down into the wall in turn three and totaled out the car. Um, it was pretty scary for my family. For me, um, it was different. Okay, uh, I like that. It was different. It's something I'd never done before, but I, I knew as soon as I stopped crashing that I was going to keep racing. Um, as far as my mom, she was pretty sure we were going to quit. As far as uh, uh, my wife, she knew I was going to keep going. <laughs> uh, as far as my sponsors, uh, Seek Eye Care, that was their first time at the races to watch me. You put on quite the show for them. So that, that was their first race ever sponsoring me, and they had been there to watch me. Okay. And uh, so they were a little shocked. <laughs> um, but I put on a show for them. I was entertaining. Yep, yep, yep. That's um, you were. So, so anyways, um, we've been fortunate to have a lot of luck. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. Uh, coming to events like this and having kids crawl on the cars. I love it. I've noticed that, you know, we, we've had to cut the kids out because it is a YouTube video, but you are allowing the kids freely to climb over the cars, in and out of the cars, and play around with them. And that's really cool that you're able to share that, and you've, you have that sense of community that you have. Uh, and I think part of that's growing up in small-town uh, Minnesota as well. That, that's part of it. And, uh, you know, Rob, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you for sharing your passion. Because I mean, for someone to tumble a few times, and I immediately, he probably didn't even take stock of how he was physically before he'd already decided, well, I'm going to keep going no matter if I've fractured my collarbone or not. Uh, so, but thank you so much for sharing your passion. Thank you for sharing your cars. And uh, it's a great story. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.